as long as you had an emotional reaction to that good meditation, you will have an emotional pain. Yes, that's the truth. Because it's in reaction that opposites come. And if you can manage somehow with a lot of practice and years of meditation and so on to weed aside the reactions, especially the emotional reactions, and just rest in the fact. Not, for example, say, oh, wow, I have such a great meditation, oh! You know that tomorrow you're going to be a slump. <laughs> but if you can say, that was a great meditation, but don't get excited about it, you'll find that it stays with you. That's why it's so important, for example, when you meditate and you find yourself emotional, try to stay away from that. Try not to get involved in the emotion, because the love, the devotion, the joy will be much deeper and there won't be an opposite to it. Now, in that, we have to remember that ultimately we want to separate ourselves, and it's not a quick thing. It could be a quick thing if you could really uh, make up your mind that you're free, but uh, not very many people can do it. Basically, because they expect it to take time, it takes time. Really, that's what it's about. If you could really understand that it's right now, you wouldn't have to go through all this stuff of Kriya Yoga and meditation and Samadhi and everything. You'd just be there. But the mind can't accept that thought because it's been too conditioned. And so bit by bit we have to improve on these things. And that means that we have to live in this world not only uh, as uh, hermits. Master made this point very clear. The Bhagavad Gita makes this point very clear. We have to live in this world to make it a better world. We have to feel that this world is, uh, as we make it better, we become better. But it's if we become too attached to these things, then it doesn't become better because the ego gets involved. Nonetheless, for example, my uh, garden at Crystal Hermitage, this was a uh, you know, when my parents died, they left me a certain amount of money, and I thought, well, I know that Dad's soul would be miserable if I, if I gave it to Ananda. I know... <laughs> I know that I would be miserable if I kept it for myself. So let me do something for Ananda that would seem like it was for me, too. So I used that money to create Crystal Hermitage. And, as you know, you've been there, it's beautiful. But there, and there was also a woman who came here some years ago. And she'd had some sort of a gadget with which she measured vibrations, and she'd been to all these uh, uh, sacred sites and temples in Europe and so on. And the highest vibration she'd found, if I recall correctly, was 28,000. And she couldn't believe it when she came up to Crystal Hermitage. She said, but it's 32,000, this is incredible. Well, I don't know the genuineness of her experience, but anyway, it was a good thing. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> and the truth is that when you create beauty, and I'd love for you women in the community to think of this, because the women have a better eye for this kind of thing than men do. And if you could really put your minds to making Ananda beautiful, that's not delusion, except in this way. Sure, it's delusion, but you have to go in the right direction. And when you, everything that you do takes you more toward beauty, toward harmony, toward peace, it's still a part of delusion, but it's taking you out of it and taking you closer to God. And so much that we do in life cannot be anything but relative. So let it be relatively good rather than relatively bad. <laughs> this is right. And so, for example, Crystal Hermitage, the vibrations are great. You know why? Because physical beauty created with love, draws high astral entities to it. And when you just have a forest, well, how many stories are about rakshasas living in the forest? <laughs> it's the truth, isn't it? Yeah, you have a few hermits too, but an awful lot of rakshasas, it seems. I know that there is something that when you create beauty, I mean, you worry about taking down the trees, nature, God, the angels, want this place beautiful, and it won't be beautiful, it's just a jumble of falling down trees. So don't worry about that. Think about making a place that's beautiful for God. And as I said, you ladies especially um, have an eye for that, so I really count on you more than on us men. I hate to say it, but there it is. 